A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Saint Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Chapter Ten verses from 25 to 37. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But waiting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, bet him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while troubling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. 
The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the in, gave them to the innkeeper and said, "Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend." Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the rovers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. The right of religious profession begins with a gesture that we often find in the Gospels. Like Jesus, who after having looked with love at the one he intended to choose, called him to be his follower. So in the same way, these sisters of ours who are intended to follow Christ more closely are called by name. They answer personally and thus commit themselves by public vow to follow Christ. Badashushaya Upneal. Sylvia Lalmo Iswali. Larisha Yaupneyao. Salomi Hasta. Sunida Jojo Lord, you have called me here I Dimrella R. Marak Lord, you have called me here I am My dear sisters, Brother Shisha, Sylvia, Larisha, Salome, Sunita and Dimrela. What do you ask of God and of his church? During these years of our formation, we Mother Superior, the Provincial Superior, asked me to come and preside over this Eucharist. I kept her in suspense because I was making the visit of the diocese ever since I was ordained the same day I started, and I have still two more parishes to go to finish the whole diocese. So I adjusted, and then I later I gave her a positive reply. Also because I felt that I should 
pay back the gratitude uh, through, my, uh, through the words of, uh, through this gesture of what they are in the diocese, in the parish of Habibpur. Because I believe that uh, each congregation with this charism uh, enriches the diocese. So that's why I'm here. Secondly, I would like to wish all of you, my dear sisters, a very happy feast of your founder, Saint Luigi Rosoppi. And uh, I believe what is written here, the heart of every sister is like an altar consecrated to God. On it, there must always burn the fire of holy love. And from that fire must come flames of charity. Beautiful words. And today, uh, the word of God that we heard in the first reading, Deuteronomy, is telling us that our life will become meaningful only when we share, give liberally. Open your hand to the poor and needy neighbor in your land, and then God will bless us. And the second reading, we are told of the greatness of the love of God in Jesus Christ which surpasses all knowledge. And we are told by St. Paul, pray that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. So the more we understand the love of God in our lives, the more we can be effective. Otherwise, we will become beggars all our life, begging for love from things, from people, and say with the Gospel, Jesus uh, summarizing the whole, all the commandments in this too, and then through this uh, parable, beautiful parable, it's telling us about the real, the real, who is a real neighbor to the other. And we are told, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. There are no boundaries or barriers or race or social standing, wealth or any other distinction that must be allowed to block the love of love and care we owe to our neighbor. Every human being is our neighbor. But today my attention is on the six novices. So others you don't put off. You can also listen, this is also good for you because uh, religious life is uh, the jewel of the church. So I believe uh, what I'm saying is also good for others. Some basics I want to share with you, my dear novices. Why you join religious life? Not for a picnic, I believe. It's not, it's not. But to live better with all Christians, we are called to take Jesus seriously in our lives. God does not vow to love us. God loves us. And so to live the gospel more passionately, to live Jesus' teaching and example more fully and with a lot of coherence and not to maintain the works that we have or keep the keep these institutions going, no, no. But to become Christ-like and to be gripped by him and his gospel. This is the first thing. To become another Christ. So when we die, when they carry us to the cemetery, they should not say, thank God is no more, or she is no more. <laughs> the, the fragrance of our being Christ-like must spread. And that's why you see the three goals of organized religious life are not different from those of uh, committed, those um, Christian commitment, you know. First is the personal growth, to become better, to become more Christ-like persons. And this in a community. You know, that community life is so important for religious to live in love and great unity of becoming one heart and one soul with others because of our faith in Christ, not because of commonality of language, race, or other things. And then the mission, uh, not because, uh, but to bring God's people uh, as Jesus did through this proclamation with our lives and with, our, with the gospel. Religious need to become more loving, more responsible and more committed adults, having chosen to follow this way of life with sufficient inner freedom. This journey you have done with your novice mistress, isn't it? 
and uh, to, be, to, to live out this with a lot of joy, generosity. Otherwise, it can maim or maim us immaturely and become not mature persons. This choice of life should help you to discover the goodness that you are capable of. Otherwise, we will be wasting our time. I am more concerned about what they have in their mind and heart than on their feet. St. Francis of Sales. Now, when uh, asked what they should wear, you know, St. Francis of Sales they said this, what is in their mind and heart that is more important. Second basic thing is that we, Jesus should become everything for me. Should be enough. Jesus is enough. The reason of your existence, the source of your happiness is Eucharist. Every morning we have this possibility of celebrating. It should be an experience, not a rule, not a, just a routine. Our commitment is not to a formula. You will recite you know, a few moments from now. Our fidelity is not to a set of rules. The criterion of your orthodoxy is not a book but the person of Jesus Christ, his life, his teaching, his suffering, death, and resurrection. And St. Luigi had so much of stress on this word suffering, the Paschal journey of Christ. And uh, thirdly, Jesus is the central choice for you who are making your so special choice within your general Christian commitment. Moving from the house of fear to the house of love, to be captured by a love that fills the heart, that leads you to make this crazy commitment joyfully and a lot of trust. And like Mary Magdalene and the Apostles, we should be able to say, we have seen the Lord. Vidimus Dominum. It is seeing, or at least, at the least, the desire to live as he lived and taught and finding the meaning of one's life in the life and teachings of Jesus that makes religious life enthusiastic and purposeful. Aren't, one Hindu professor said these words, aren't all your books, programs, conferences, buildings and courses meant to spread the simple message of a simple man? I feel that it is precisely that simple message that you are forgetting. Some of us are after our religious profession or priesthood, live uninspiring lives. That person, Jesus, is more alive today. Without believing in that simple man and taking his message seriously, religious life does not make sense at all. Now we are going to make these vows, three vows, the three gods of love. I will just spend a few words on these three vows. You have studied such a lot, and the mistress have clarified everything, I'm sure. Celibacy, which is the first vow no, that of yours, as per the order of preference I saw, is a chastity. That is to be always available to help anyone, like Jesus, who had no time to eat. That mood to pity, in Bengali, it is no pran kedeot. Means, means, you know, means my heart, that's compassion. Means having a big heart and big dreams, that's it is that. Having a big heart, a loving heart, always available and having big dreams, what more can I do? What more can I do? For a visionary big, with a big heart and big dreams, chastity makes plenty of sense. They make things happen. Those who are chaste people, they make things happen. They don't watch things happen or criticize others. That's why this Holy Father is saying, there's a lot of them today in the church who are only criticizing and gossiping. And this is terrorism, he says. No? So doing God's work is what fills their heart. They launch boldly into tough situations with trust and optimism. Their most frequent thoughts and most spontaneous conversations are of helping people, as you found in the Gospel today. means the capacity for loving self-gift. The greater danger in celibacy is to live an unloving 
and a sour heart and consider it to be normal. <laughs> right. Chastity is a good choice for those with a big heart and big dreams, for those who are gripped by faith, vision, and want to live as Jesus lived and taught. One of the clear and happy signs of his, of his taste a life is being loving and courageous and having that availability, courageous availability for the service of others. And when we do this, there will be a lot of joy in us, lots of joy in us. To be alive and joyful, that should be their trademark and transmit the same to others. Enthuse others, to put on fire others. But if you are fused, how can we put on fire? No. So true chastity is marked by this deep joy, gospel joy. It is not a joy that is coming from things outside the world. It is a joy that comes from following Christ, having that intimacy with Him, and through that intimacy with the capacity to love and to give oneself to the church and to the world. By this I am not saying there will not be struggles, there will be struggles. You know? And uh, living this taste life, and it is in that struggle, uh, that bears fruit in the ministry and in our life, more than our achievements. True and happy joyful celebrates are God-centered and not, do not compete or try to stand above, and or they are not power-hungry or looking for careers, or very cold and arrogant. When I was a provincial, I went to a visit, visit a a community where there's a school and the people met me and they said they told me in Hindi is a fantastic principle but usko dimak hai lekin deel nahi hai usko jangal mein bhej do so you see this is no use of we can be very what do you call a lot of things we know but we, we don't, don't have a heart to love when we, do, when we are filled with arrogance our works will not be useful so that's why Henry Noyan says, not being married or not being involved in a sexual relationship does not constitute the celibate life. Celibacy is an openness to God of which sexual abstinence is only one of its manifestations. Celibacy is a self-style in which we try to witness to the priority of God in all relationships. And this involves every part of our life. The second vow that is there, I found in the order of preference, is that of poverty. With the heart that is full, and we are filled with the love of God, we heard, you know, hands empty, we, we are not attached to anything. And deep love for the poor, the needy, as we heard in the first reading. So because religious life offers us a lot of security, and sometimes a very enviable social status, where one does not need to struggle for food, clothing, rent, travel, medicine, or education. The vow of poverty really does not make most of us poor. It makes us exceptionally secure. This vow would be meaningful if we, if as a religious, one wants to live a simple life in imitation of Jesus and has a real love for the poor, the attitude to help the poor and the needy, and not to get to the latest gadgets or have a, live a lifestyle which is of the bourgeois. So real poor religious will seek not personal gifts or comfort or scholarships, but scholarships for the poor students, houses for the homeless, medicines for the poor patients, or to raise the salaries of the poor employees working in our houses. Going to the various parishes, the only cry that I heard from the catechist is, Bishop, how will we manage with 2,000 rupees? <laughs> okay, so my, all the time I'm thinking how I will, uh, will increase that. <laughs> so you see, the, this is having a heart for the poor, heart full of love, keeping life simple as one of the best helps for happiness, you see. Greed makes us unhappy, you see, always wanting more, 
being jealous of what others have. And you know, as we go on, we can add more and more. I need this, I need that, and then the list ever becomes bigger and bigger. If my heart is full, if I seek happiness in the right places, we will be close to God. To be close to God. And there will be genuine relationships. You know, wanting to love rather than to dominate. Seeking to serve rather than get privileged treatment. I do not need luxuries to keep me happy. If instead my heart is empty, I will seek to fill it with things, with power, with competition or grabbing. To put the needs of the poor in the first place and keep our own life as simple as possible. And this, my dear novices, creates a deep inner freedom uh, that brings so much joy and serenity. This simplicity of life has strong links to the vow of celibacy. One cannot uh, be rich and celibate. Not possible. So that's why this poverty, uh, uh, to be happy, you know, to live a simple life, and that you have chosen to follow Christ and his gospel. Without the love or vision, it can degenerate into a meaningless, comfortable, irresponsible upper middle class life. So you see here, uh, this is the, as Jesus says, this vow of poverty. You know, being poor, simple, is a pearl of great price. You know, learn to do without. You know, more and more if you learn that uh, mantra in your life, you'll see you'll be happy. Without struggles or insecurity, with no closeness to the poor, I can justify the rich lifestyle with so-called permissions. The third bar, very challenging, obedience. I miss God's business first. God's business first. The most obedient religious is the one with the most initiatives. Initiatives of love. And not reducing it to doing what we are told and nothing more. I was always, uh, it was very sad when uh, somebody used to say, uh, conference, okay, provision told me to do this and nothing more. <laughs> right. But that is being very minimalistic in our life. If you really love your vocation, you will always want more, but more we can do. Those who have no zeal, initiative, those who do not think, those who are not moved by others' suffering and needs, are passive, frightened, or dependent, cannot obey. Cannot obey. For me, the biggest challenge in religious life is this obedience. A passionate commitment to the mission, to the mission we have received. Even if it gets, uh, even if one gets into trouble, when you are taking initiatives of love, you will get into trouble. You will get into trouble. One needs to take the trouble to speak up, to face criticism and rejection, to help the neediest. What Jesus would do? He scandalized everybody. Religious obedience is not a childish escape from adult responsibility or a fearful submission to whatever those on the top decide. It means listening, ob audire in Latin, to listen intently. It means listening intently to God's voice, to follow that voice generously and sincerely, not once likes and dislikes, comforts, and love of ease. See, when we are, when today there are a lot of dialogue in obedience, no? and then they do what they want. It is not obedience at all. Right. So, religious obedience is to put oneself at God's disposal. What is God asking of me to do? To do with my life what God wants, and not to make a career or to do what I find easier. Tell you, I, I would not have taken this bishopric for anything in the world. <laughs> I was supposed to go in the month of, this month only to, uh, to the missions. But when so I was called to ask to do this service, I was told to spend a lot of time in prayer in the new season. And then the Lord told me, it is not your church, it's my church. Right? You do what I ask you to do. Because I know this is crucifixion. <laughs> All right. So, but 
to do what he wants. Ob audire, <laughs> to listen intently. When they were bringing a lot of these, you know, Lord, uh, taking me with the, I don't know, with the car, with the balloons and this thing and that thing, I, I was reminded of Jesus on that uh, day of his uh, going to uh, with the palms and, you know, and after he was really crucify him. <laughs> All right, so it is not very far away. Don Bosco was passionately obedient with a lot of innumerable initiatives, my my hero, all right? And what he did not do, like that I'm sure, you know, all, all our founders, they did that, you know? In the process they suffered, they were misunderstood. So we need to bring creativity, passion and courage to the mission. Doing the same thing for 50 years is no... <laughs> But we have to be creative. What is Lord asking me to do now? He can know, here and now. If our concern is maintenance and survival, and if members are not alive to today's needs and challenges, it may have a slow death. Like that, many congregations have disappeared. Our target is to be God-centered and to be taken, to be keen on doing as much good as we can with our short life in the company of others. So that mission must grip us, you know. Jesus always told, I must go to the other village because they are waiting for me. That's why. So you see, they should grip our life with a lot of initiatives. To be obedient, it means to be God-centered, to be love-filled, and to be mission-focused persons. I repeat, God-centered, Love filled, if you are sour or noise. <laughs> Love filled and mission focused. That means if I can say in one simple, simple language of the people, you know, any job, any time, any place, but not anyhow. Not anyhow. With love and giving my 100%. The way has to be loving, the commitment wholehearted. But the type of work, or the place, or the setting, does not matter. These are three vows, but you live in a community, you know? So, community is a family, it's not a factory. It's a family. I'm sure you have your own charism, I'm sure that to fulfill these three vows in a community life. And St. John Paul II, you know, uh, Pope John Paul II gave us this legacy to the church, and that is the spirituality of communion. Living together, coming together for meals, praying together is not communion, but sharing our joys. You know? And there's a really, really one chapter, one chapter on this. This Pope has written beautiful. I'm not going to say that. Otherwise, I'll keep you till lunch. So this self gift will give in the community your talents, your time, your views, and your qualifications. The gifts that you receive, you no, know? there must be transparency. If there are hidden agendas in our life. This communion, communion cannot be created, cannot be, cannot live this communion. The model of this uh, communion is the early Christian community of the Acts of the Apostles, where there was joy, mutual love and sharing, respect, God-centered life, simple and hospitable lives to live together in real love and to treat others with genuine love and create a family and, and not a fact, no? Family. And the last one of this, what I have to say is that uh, you, your life must be gripped by something larger than life, mission. Every congregation has a mission, a particular mission. So each of us, we are given something to do in this world for a particular purpose. Jeremiah chapter 29 has this. God has a mission for us. And uh, what he has given you is not given me. So like that, we have a particular mission to follow. We do, do with our lives what God wants us to do. And this brings a unity of purpose you know, and action. For a person on mission, life is challenging, very meaningful and, and a demanding adventure. For such persons, time is too short. The opportunity is to do good, almost endless. And life is a fascinating series of responses to the demands of a love that gives direction to everything. They are the last to complain about sacrifices 
or waste their time on gossip and discussion on food. If someday we can write uh, other books on lamentations in our religious life, no? But we have, we have gripped by a mission, we will not have time for all this. That's why Mahatma you know, had said like this, a small band of persons completely committed to their mission can change the course of history. And he lived it, and he showed it with his own life. So my dear novices, I am sure I will not keep you too long. No? I have not kept you too long. But uh, remember these three mantras, be joyful. Joy which is comes because Christ's word is in you, as we heard in the second reading. And that joy, as Jesus said, I am telling you all this, that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be complete. And then, as another mantra, you know, your life must be prophetic. Your life must speak to others. Must be a level, a signpost, as this Pope was saying. This is the distinguishing mark of religion. And the third, which is very demanding, is to live a life of communion of one heart and one soul. And this is actually one of the biggest problems of the church today. Explosion we can put out, but implosion is very difficult. You know? Whether it is in the religious life, whether it is in the church as a whole, it is very difficult. So my dear uh, novices, this is a very important moment of your life as you are going to say this yes before the Lord and make this commitment to these three courts of love, may the Lord assist you, especially our Blessed Mother and your patron, St. Luigi, um, accompany you in your uh, commitment. Faith is heaven.
Now those to be professed stand, and the celebrant questions them on their readiness to devote themselves to God and to seek perfect charity according to the rule of the Institute. The rest can sit. My dear sisters, by your baptism, you are already consecrated to God through His Spirit. Are you now resolved, with the help of God, which is always there, to be more closely united to Him through the bond of this religious profession? Yes, I am so resolved. With the evangelical wisdom, you have already realized the supreme value of the kingdom. Are you now resolved to imitate Jesus more faithfully and willing to serve your brothers and sisters by living chastity, poverty and obedience? Yes, I am so resolved. Through the experience you have gained in the community of the Sisters of Providence, you have realized the will of God for you. Are you now resolved with the help of God to accept freely the rule of life of the religious community of the Sisters of Providence and pledge to practice in the works of mercy which the congregation undertakes in the church? Yes, I am so resolved. May the Lord who initiated this good work in you, moving your will to act, give you His grace to fulfill your resolutions until the coming of Christ the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us pray to God, the Father of infinite goodness and kindness, that He may assist these sisters in their holy resolve. We shall spend a little time in silent prayer. Father, upon these daughters of who wish to imitate your son more closely by making profession of the evangelical councils in the presence of your church, mercifully grant that their choice of life may bring glory to your name and sustain your loving plan for the salvation of the world. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Those to be professed come before the Major Superior one by one and read the handwritten formula of profession. She then places it on the altar and signs with her religious name. The Major Superior counters signs. Thank you. 
prayers of the whole church.
I humbly entrust my consecration and my religious family to the prayers of the whole church.
Saint Joseph and the Virgin Mary, Mother of Providence. I humbly entrust my consecration and my religious family, the prayers of the whole church. The celebrant will present a crucifix to each newly professed.
Sylvia, receive this crucifix as a sign of your consecration to Christ the Lord in the service of the church. Lavisha, receive this crucifix as a sign of your consecration to Christ the Lord in the service of the church. Salome, receive this crucifix as a sign of your consecration to Christ the Lord in the service of the church. Sunita, receive this crucifix as a sign of your consecration to Christ the Lord in the service of the church. Vibrella, receive this crucifix as a sign of your consecration to Christ the Lord in the service of the church. Now, the major superior will hand over each newly professed a copy of the rule of life and invite them to follow it and live wholeheartedly as it is a means to foster charity that is to live in the community of sisters of providence. We pray that God strengthens them to be faithful to the life they have chosen. Receive the role of life of the Sisters of Providence. Fix your attention to it and live it faithfully. Always desiring to live in the spirit of the community of Sisters of Providence. Remember that the role is only a means to foster charity that is your love for the Lord and neighbor, for which one day you will be judged. <coughs> Sylvia, receive the rule of life of the Sisters of Providence. Fix your attention to it and live it faithfully. Always desiring to live in the spirit of the community of Sisters of Providence. Remember that the rule is only a means to foster charity that is your love for the Lord and neighbor, on which one day you will be judged. Addition, receive the role of life of the Sisters of Providence. Fix your attention to it and live it faithfully. Always desiring to live in the spirit of the community of Sisters of Providence. Remember that the role is only a means to foster charity that is your love for the Lord and neighbor, on which one day you will be judged. Receive the role of life of the Sisters of Providence. Fix your attention to it and live it faithfully. Always desiring to live in the spirit of the community of Sisters of Providence. Remember that the role is only a means to foster charity that is your love for the Lord and live on which one day you will be judged. Receive the role of life of the Sisters of Providence. Fix your attention to it and live it faithfully. Always desiring to live in the spirit of the community of Sisters of Providence. Remember that the role is only a means to foster charity that is your love for the Lord and neighbor, from which one day you will be judged. Dibrella, receive the rule of life of the Sisters of Providence. 
fix your attention to it and live it faithfully. Always desiring to live in the spirit of the community of Sisters of Providence. Remember, the rule is only a means to foster charity, that is, your love for the Lord and the neighbor, for which one day you will be judged. Stand. and bring all our intentions to our Father and especially to ask our to bless newly professed that they may be faithful in their consecration in life. Let your response be Serve you with the 
infidelity to the profession and in renunciation of all things for the sake of Christ, they may live their homes with power and your name. Let us pray.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. God, our Father, accept this gifts we offer through the intercession of St. Luigi, who consecrated his entire life to the good of his neighbor. Help us also to be worthy offering in fulfillment of your holy will. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer as an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory to Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith.
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas de Sousa, Nirmal Gomez, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, Spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, St. Lucy, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quest to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and joy, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ keep us safe for eternity.
Let us pray. Lord, you have nourished us at the table of your Son. Help us by the example of your praise, Saint Luigi, to bear witness to our lives, to the gift we have received, and through his intercession grant us the peace to become instruments of your providence. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. I think one thing we have missed today, the providence sisters have six more in the congregation and six more in the province. So let's give a big hand to the newly. And I want to wish the parents who come from so far to be with them. So Jisoo Nara song, Jai Jisoo, Jisoo Marang, and Kublai. So I wish all the best. And Chibai, because that's also in Jisoo, I think. So I prayed for you that the Lord may keep you faithful till the end of your lives and be joyful, uh, consecrated persons in the church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Philippians 4, 4. Yes, today we rejoice in the Lord. Our hearts are filled with gratitude and joy as we recall the marvelous ways in which God has guided us. Your Lordship, Nirmal Vincent Gomes, Bishop of Krishnanagar, Father Raphael, Father Samson, Sister Gracie Sebastian, our provincial superior, fathers, sisters, parents, brothers, and well-wishers. On behalf of my friends, I stand here to express our gratitude to everyone who are and were instrumental in making us what we are. First and foremost, I render my humble thanks from the core of my heart to the Almighty Father for the preferential love with which He called and made us His own. I take this opportunity to place my deepest gratitude to our Reverend Bishop Nirmal Vincent Gomes, who, in spite of his hectic schedule, blessed us with his esteemed presence on this special day of ours. We are grateful to you, your Lordship, for breaking the word of God for us and leaving a great message to be treasured in our hearts. We extend words of special thanks to our dear fathers who concelebrated and prayed for us. We gratefully remember Reverend Father George Pantan Markle, Rector of, of Morningstar Regional Seminary, for his kind availability to help us out every time that we approach him. A word of deep felt gratitude to all the fathers of Morningstar Seminary for the daily celebration of the Holy Eucharist and the well-prepared inspiring homilies that help us to live our daily life in His Divine Presence. Thanks to you, Father Sebastian and Father Alphonse, for your valuable help for the liturgical ceremony and the choir. Thanks to brothers of Morningstar College who availed themselves for the live streaming. 
our gratitude and admiration to our entire religious family, especially our mother general, Sister Sandra Del Bel Belus, and her team for accepting us to be part of this beautiful family of Sisters of Providence. Words and appreciation and gratefulness to dear Reverend Sister Gracie Sebastian, our provincial superior. Yes, Sister, you have guided us with your dynamic missionary spirit and instilled in us the enthusiasm to imbibe the rich heritage of Scrozopian spirituality and accepted us as the daughters of Providence. Thank you for your care and concern and for being the source of inspiration for us and for setting the whole community in action for this grace-filled day. You have generously contributed in preparing us for this grace-filled occasion. A special word of thanks to our counselors, superiors, and all the sisters of our religious family for accompanying us on this auspicious day with their valuable prayers. We recall with gratitude all the formators of our initial stage, Sister Gracie, Sister Valsa, Sister Mercy, Sister Deepa, Sister Anna, and Sister Shanti, and all those who helped us in discovering the beauty of the religious life. We owe our special thanks to Sister Prof Lit, the animator of the Formation community, Sister Sebastina, Sister Lucy, and Sister Deepa, for accompanying our Formation journey with great love for the past three years. Dear sisters, you have manifested to us the joy of a fraternal community which is built on love and prayer. Thank you for the time and energy you invested for our growth. We have a grace-filled person who made an appearance in our life and has left an enduring imprint in our hearts through the very examples of life and through the systematic formation. That is none other than our porcelain and novice mistress, Sister Liti Matthew. Dear sister, words are insufficient to thank you as we recall all the way you have formed us. We are greatly indebted to you for your keen interest to mold and shape us. We found in you a loving mother and an understanding and sincere friend. Thank you again for the important role that you played in our life. What we are today is the fruit of your hard work. We are grateful to our spiritual fathers, Reverend Father Anthony CMF and Father Anthony Patrick Jayaraj MSFS, who guided us to grow stronger in our faith day by day. A special thanks to Father Raja Sacred Hearts, our retreat preacher, who prepared us, us spiritually to commit ourselves with devotion and love. We thank Father George CMF and Father Thuma Mariadas MSFS and all those who helped us through the sacrament of reconciliation. We gratefully remember Father Elias Dimelo, parish priest of Thakunagar, and Father Peter Anthony for their great support and loving accompaniment during our one month retreat. A loving remembrance of gratitude to late Reverend Father Lord Swami SJ, who contributed a lot for our spiritual growth. May his soul rest in peace. We cordially acknowledge the prayerful support of all the fathers sisters and brothers of our neighboring communities of Morning Star, Claret Nivas, Sacred Hearts, Daughters of Saint Anne, and Apostolic Carmel. We thank our dear Sister Valsa and all the Sisters of Provincial Aid Community for your help, support, and above all, for your hard work to make this day a memorable one. With delightful heart, we thank Providence Choir, sisters, novices, 
postulants and candidates for their melodious singing, beautiful and creative decorations, and flower arrangements that added beauty to today's celebration. Finally, our beloved parents, we stand before you with folding hands in gratitude and love. We thank God for, your, for the gift of you in our life. You gave us life, you loved us, and brought us up in the Christian faith, and you encouraged us to follow Jesus. You accompanied us every day with your prayers and blessings. We bow our heads before you to receive your blessing on this special day of our life. We thank Father Samson, brothers, sisters, and dear and near ones for the loving accompaniment from our childhood days till today and the days to come. Thanks to everyone who helped us in one way or the other. You have been a source of strength to us through your prayer, sacrifice, and support. Kindly continue to pray for us that we may, like our founder, distinguish ourselves for the unlimited trust in divine providence and remain faithful to the charism of our religious family. May our life of holiness enrich the church, the community we serve, and the world around us. Thank you. Wish you a very happy feast of our beloved founder, St. Luigi Scorsopi. May I invite Right Reverend Bishop and Fathers to have photo with our newly professed sisters.
I request everyone come out of the lobby and be seated.
and Apostolic Colonel, dear parishioners, school staff representatives, friends, and well wishers. On behalf of our community, I extend our sincere thanks and gratitude to each one of you for your valuable presence here with us. May I now invite the choir to voice the welcome song.
this with great love and pleasure, we introduce to you our newly prophet sisters. Sister Larisha Mary Lopnio and Larisha Mary Parents, please come forward. Ahe and Mehe. Sister Larisha Mary O'Neill hails from the state of Meghalaya, non Stoinensis from Mokrua Parish. She is the sixth daughter of Mrs. Trespina O'Neill and Mr. Willie Marway. She has five brothers and two sisters. Hati will come to you, dear Sister Larisha to our beloved family of Sisters of Providence. May I call upon Sister Rosalina to garland her. Sister Bada Shisha Yopio belongs to the state of Meghalaya Northstone Diocese from Mahurwat Parish. She is the eldest among the six boys and two girls of Mrs. Rita Mary Yopio and Mr. Sifran Jerwa. Sister Larisha Mary Yopio and Sister Bada Shisha Yopio are first cousins. The family of Sisters of Providence extends a warm welcome to you, dear sister. I now request Sister Bindu, Provincial Councillor, to felicitate Sister Bada Shisha with a gala. Sister Dimrela R. Marak, parents of Sister Dimrela. Sister Dimrela Marak, R. Marak comes from the state of Assam. She belongs to the Archdiocese of Guwahati from Boko Parish. She is the first daughter of Mrs. Saroda Al Marak and Mr. Etus M. Marak. She has one brother and one sister. The Providence family is delighted to welcome a new member, Sister Andrea. I invite Sister Lizzie Kanankal, Vice Provincial Councillor, to felicitate Sister Devila Vilagarada. Sister Salome has that.
Sister Salabi Hasda from, from the state of West Bengal, Raigach Diocese, and Uttaram Parish. She is the fourth daughter of Mrs. Mugli Judu, and this is her brother. She has five sisters and two brothers. With open arms, the sisters of Providence welcome you, dear sister. I now invite Sister Cecily, animator of Mathur Nagar, to felicitate Sister Salome with a gala. Sister Sunita Jojo. Sister Sunita Jojo hails from the state of Jharkhand, belongs to the Diocese of Zindega, Kotungia Parish. She is the youngest daughter of Mr. Martin Jojo and Mrs. Kulmani Lugun, and this is her eldest brother. She has, she has four brothers and one sister. May I now invite Sister Prophet? Animator of Formation Community to facilitate Sister Sunita with a garment. Sister Sylvia Namor Zoli. Sister Sylvia hails from the state of Mizora, Diocese of Iso, from Bairabi Parish. Sister Sylvia is the first Mizo sister of our for the Sisters of Providence. She is the youngest daughter of Mrs. Jacinta Namorzoli. She has two sisters and one brother. And this is her brother. May I now request Sister Sebastiana to felicitate Sister Sylvia with a garland. Dear parents and dear ones present here, we are grateful to you for offering your beloved daughters and sisters to our sweet home. We thank God for the steadfast love which endures forever. Now, I invite the Providence Choir to congratulate our newly professed sisters with their melodious voices. I invite the sisters to
They are source of blessing, no? Is it not? Just during the time of profession. Then it disappears. Now you see sunshine. So as we take this meal, let us call upon God in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For the loving Father, we thank you for your goodness and love that you manifest each day, especially today, as you gave to the church and to the congregation six new members. This is the lifeline of the congregation and the church. We ask you to bless them with fidelity and perseverance in their vocation. As we partake of this meal, we ask you to bless our fellowship. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Luigi, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So congratulations once again. to all 